Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. So I'm going to be taking you through a day with my fourth grader. So I chatted with my son and he was okay with me sharing kind of what goes on in our day, what it looks like for him to do school. Now, mind you, I am following him only for his skill-based subjects. So we're talking language arts and math and things like that. All of our other subjects are kind of together family school. I'm actually gonna be filming that video separately, a day in the life of Sunlight HBLC and Science C, so look forward to that. But know that this is just part of his school, but this is really his individual school. And so it was really fun to record all these clips with my son. And so let's just hop into the day where I highlight my fourth grader. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here or welcome back if you've been coming for a while. So like I said, I am taking you through the day with my fourth grader. So we're just gonna go step by step through his day. So I looked first at our planner and I do have a plan with me video where I shared how I set up my planner and all of that. I also have a video of our planner, which I love our sunlight planner. But anyway, I looked through my planner and I looked for all the blue because I color coordinate my kids and Anything that is his skill-based subjects is in blue. And, and so I looked down my planner, which I set up kind of based on time so that I can check it off as we go. So the first thing that is a skills-based subject for him is math, then a little bit of independent work, then we do some sunlight stuff, and then he comes back for handwriting and language arts. So that's the plan for how this video is gonna go. So the first thing you will see is he is starting up on his math. We use Saxon math he uses 5-4 which is really where they switch into more independent work he's also using nicole the math lady which is working really well i made a video about kind of making that decision i'll post it above and so first he starts with his fact sheets and so that's here in his little working binder and he doesn't really push back with me on those he knows he needs to learn his facts and so that's usually the first thing he does and then he hops to kind of the station we have for his computer this is where he logs on to Nicole the Math Lady. I have him do his warm up problems first, and that's where he clicks on within the program and he works on those, although they are found in his textbook, which you'll see in I think one of these clips. I show you doing his work kind of with the computer and the textbook. But then he's also watching his videos, so his video lesson with Nicole the Math Lady. And so what I want to highlight here is the fact that this works really well but it's not just a like leave him there sort of situation. So how I view his math time is I let him work through his facts and then his like warm up problems and then he watches the videos. And then if he starts to have problems, say with a lesson practice, which is what comes next with the Saxon program, and I only have him do odds or evens, it's just too much work otherwise. And so once he starts doing his lesson practice, if he's not getting it, I sometimes have to check on him for a couple things. One. He has to make sure he's on the right problem. That happens a lot. He'll be solving something and then he realizes he's on 16 instead of 17. And of course the computer says his answer is wrong. So I always make him check that first and then we'll kind of go through it and see if it's like a reading issue. Cause that I have learned is that for him, sometimes I just need to read the problem out and he hears it better than when he's reading it himself. Then he'll understand what to do. But otherwise, sometimes I do make him go back and watch the video again if he's having quite a bit of problems or we'll take a break and I'll have him watch it again and keep going back with the problems. So I'd say math goes really well. He really loves the corny brain break, which he asked me to get a video of them watching the corny brain breaks. And so I will insert that clip here. And then you can see he's finishing out the rest of his work where he's going kind of between the textbook and his notebook where he writes down the problem and works it out and then inputting the answer into the computer. And the other thing I did want to mention here is at the same time that he is doing math, I am working either with my kindergartners or my third grader doing her language arts. And so if he has issues, he has to flag it. What I love about Nicole the Math Lady is you can flag a problem and come back to it. So he can just keep going. If he needs my help, but yet I'm kind of deep into teaching somebody else, I tell him to flag it. And then when I have a moment, I go over and we work through the flags, kind of what he had issues with. And so that's really helpful. It keeps him moving, but yet I'm able to help him when I need to help him. So that's kind of his first big chunk of the day. And then following his math, depending on the day, depending on how fast I'm working with the other kids, he also has independent work he can do. So this is usually like typing, reading comprehension, which is what he is doing in this clip is he's doing his Abeka reading comprehension. 
and he's able to do that himself, his reading comprehension, and then also his sunlight reader. Uh, so all of these things he can do independently. And I just love that. So he'll kind of take all his stuff, he'll go to the couch and he'll start reading. And I keep the schedule for the reader in the book. I do it for a couple reasons. There's the questions in there. He doesn't really look at them ahead of time, but also gives him kind of the schedule if he's reading certain page to certain page or if it's like chapter three, things like that. So he can kind of keep track of that. I don't think he really looks at it, but I'm able to kind of grab it quickly and ask him any questions. Although I have started pre-reading a lot of his readers just for more sweet conversations. I just enjoy talking about books with them and I do appreciate the questions, but sometimes it's just nice to know what the story is. And since these are level three readers, I can, I can read them quite quickly. So it still works for us to do that. So he kind of works through those things, math and independent work while I'm working with everybody else. And then it's kind of time for him to take a break. I feel like for him, it's a brain break time. Either he honestly has time off, like he goes and jumps on the trampoline because I'm finishing up with another kid, or this is when we switch to more of our couch type subjects where we're doing history and science and snack time. And so he gets a mental break then before he has to kind of enter back in for more language arts. And so then you can see here, after we have done all of those subjects as a family, we come back together and this is him doing his handwriting. It's very quick, I'm kind of around so I can help him, but he is really a pretty independent kiddo. Like he likes to take charge of his work and he will just sit down and do it. It doesn't need as much coaxing as some of my other kids. And so I do appreciate that about him. So he's working through his handwriting and then it switches into his language arts. And so at this point in time, my littles, my twins are done. Hopefully they're playing nicely. For the most part, they do play really well together. And my daughter, I've set her up with some of her math or she's nearby us kind of working on her worksheets. But this next kind of block, I have dedicated to my son, my fourth grader and his language arts. And so on the day I filmed this, um, we first went through our Logic of English Essentials lesson, which was a pretty intensive lesson. We actually were working on introducing the phonogram for the week, so this was the first part of a unit, I think it was like unit 10, that we were kind of hashing through this set of phonograms, which were a little bit challenging. I'll, I definitely have a lot of clips of this section to show you. And I'm also planning a whole video, a week in the life of essentials that a number of you have requested. And so that is my plan for some time this month as well. But this is just day one, where we go through a lot of that stuff. We're talking about the rules, we're talking about the sounds. So this is where I started with language arts for the day. So I'll show you a little bit of the clips for that. Or we're starting unit 10. So this is the part one, so we do all the phonemic awareness. We okay. have new phonograms. Yay! <laughs> You're very silly. <laughs> I love your forced enthusiasm. Okay, these ones are hard though. This one has five sounds. This one I think only has, oh no, this one has six sounds. This one has two sounds. Okay, so let's start with this one. Oh jeez. This one has five sounds. It says, ow, o, oh, oo, uh, uh. Ow, so like, oh, ow, ow, ow like ow. house, o oh, like soul, oo like group, uh like country, and u uh, like could. Almost like small group. Ow, o, oh, oo, uh, oo. Uh. It's kind of like, here, if you look at them, Ow, oh, ooh, and then uh, which is just a short sound, and then uh, uh -huh. like put. Okay, so your turn. Ow, oh, ooh, uh, uh. Yep, and the uh, like umbrella, and uh, like put. Ow, oh, mm -hmm. ooh, uh, uh, uh. uh. All right, fancy pants. Is it a multi letter vowel or an R controlled vowel, a single letter vowel? Mm, mini vowel. Multi letter. <laughs> Not a mini vowel. How are they different though? This is an important thing to remember when we think about spelling. So they make the first sounds the same. Ow, oh. How are they different? They have one has a W at the end and mm -hmm. one has more. And one has a U. Okay, so what does that tell you about where this, these phonograms are found in a word? One is at the end. This one? And one can be in the middle and yeah. the end. Oh, this can be at the end? What's that rule? English words don't end in I, U, V, or J. And this is a U. Cannot be at the end of a word. Okay, that makes sense. So they're, they're very similar except for that. So one thing that's important to notice is that like all, um, like the other phonograms ending in GH, 
These words are not very common. There's actually only 22 base words. And they're right here. Look at them. They're right in front of you. So these are the words that use the phonogram O-U-G-H, right? O-U-G-H. I want you to read each word, underline the uh-u-u-ow-uf-off, -off, or mm -hmm. the o-u-g-h. Mark, and then we'll start marking it. So, underline, let's do all these first lines first, where it says... And then following Logic of English, we were doing our Sunlight Language Arts. And we are doing level four of Language Arts, which see kind of my latest update video if you want a little bit more details of kind of why we've shifted this way, but I'm really liking it. It's going really well. We're definitely holding it loosely. I'm helping quite a bit. You'll see my general philosophy is very much partnering, very Brave Writer style, partnering with my kids while I'm helping them with creative expression assignments, such as the one I'm doing with my son here, where we are going through the brainstorming time of the imaginative paragraph he's going to be writing the next day. This paragraph went really well, and so it was fun to kind of go through this prompt. There was actually a story starter, which he really tends to really like these because it's a picture, and you can go so many different directions with it, and he tends to be very creative in the like, boy humor sort of way, so he had all these ideas. It was fun because we got to work together and kind of draw out those ideas and be like, well, let's make sure we understand who the characters are and the setting is and what the general problem is. And so we were working through those ideas and brainstorming and getting it out on paper. And you can see in front of me, I had my instructor's guide, which helped me with how to cue some of these things with what to say. It even gives me what to say if I wanted to really like read it word for word, which sometimes I do. But a lot of times we just chat through that and then we were working through his worksheet there and he was writing it down. Sometimes I'll help him write it, but he does a pretty good job with writing and I always remind him I don't care about spelling and so he's able to kind of work through his ideas a lot better when we tackle it in that way. And so you could see that is really how we ended his skill subjects for this day was with Logic of English and then Sunlight, and we were on day three of the week for Sunlight, which is the brainstorm session. And so it was a really fun day with him. I feel like it was enjoyable to kind of document it. I like to document it as much for myself as to show you guys kind of what at least my fourth grader does on the daily. And so I hope this was helpful. And let me know down below if you have any questions about how we specifically do it, or maybe my ideas or philosophy or what I'm trying to do at a fourth grade level, I'm happy to kind of address any of those. And otherwise, please share. If you have fourth graders, I'd love to hear your journey. I'd love to hear what they're doing for their skills and things like that, because it is so very interesting. There's so many different ways to teach these fundamentals, and I would love to hear your thoughts and your journey. So please let me know down below. But otherwise, you guys, that's what I have for this video. I hope you liked it. It was entertaining, all the things. If so, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to, and you can expect more of these day in the life sort of videos this month. I'm planning on doing it for my third grader. I'm planning on doing an essentials week in the life. I'm planning on doing my kindergartners. I'm planning on doing a sunlight day in the life. So I have lots of these things planned for October. I decided to do them all in one month. I hope you enjoy that. And so subscribe if you want to, and I will see you for the rest of the videos in October. It'll be really fun. All right, guys, take care.